It's a good thing I didn't play the whole chord. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I, saw, I, saw, I, saw, I was like, I, uh, I heard the f just the, the first couple notes. Like, oh, well, I better play it safe. D five. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good uh, good neutral chord. You can even do stuff like. Oh yeah. Classic. Oh yeah. Oh. Reminds me of a very young uh Corey. Yeah. <laughs> Hearing that well, yeah, it brings me back to I don't know, I think I was in like third grade or something. When Whoa. it was on the original, it was on MTV, I think. Yeah. Right? Oh <laughs> and, um, kids don't know what MTV is. Was that the first my dad unplugged? It might be the first unplugged. I think so. Yeah. Wasn't it? Was it yeah, it had so. to be. Yeah. Cause that was the the first time I seen it like that, like played like that. I was like, what? <laughs> when MTV mattered, just yeah, for real. <laughs> when it was just music. No, I mean it right? was still like a bunch of different stuff, but yeah. Or VH1. What is oh VH1? <laughs> I'm, at this oh. point, I'm like, is, is there even an MTV? <laughs> yeah, it's just it should just be RTV, just reality TV shows <laughs> yeah. now. Ah, uh, so. We got in some oldie ukulele. Oh, yeah. Pretty sweet. And there's tons of different models that, that we want to show you guys. Also, um, Ian O'Sullivan's going to stop by in a little bit. Oh, it's going to be a party. Tell us a, a little bit of an update on the book that he's been working on. Oh, that's right. Yeah, let's get into these oldies. Why don't you go first, Kalei? Sure. Oh yeah, since you didn't, I got to, I got my hands on all of them yesterday, <laughs> so I think I'm okay. No, nah, we, we only did a few samples. So oh, well, I guess maybe two thirds uh, of them. I only got my hands on like four of them. In, in, in <laughs> so far, pretty mind blowing. That was, yeah. Yeah, these are very incredible. <clears throat> incredible. So it's all ebony, right? The whole thing, even the fretboard. It's a spruce top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually, this, this top is spruce. For real? All right, proceed. <laughs> all right, so I'm really excited to showcase this awesome new ukulele that we will be now offering, uh, made by Oli. And this is a, a project that's been in, been in the making for some time and we're really excited to be able to showcase these instruments so let's get right into it um, these are all solid wood builds they sound incredible um, this one has probably one of our favorite wood combinations you know we're big fans of spruce and cedar this one has spruce for the soundboard and the whole theme of this ukulele will be all ebony so it's made from macasta ebony for the back size fingerboard bridge faceplate and also the binding too very, very beautiful details that we have going on here. And if you look at the side or corner over here, we have the armrest, side port, and just look at the Macaster ebony on the back. Very, very beautiful wood. Nice satin mahogany neck. We got gold Grover tuners. Really, really nice and smooth. Stays in tune very well. And then moving on to the front, there is a purfling that goes around the binding, the fretboard, and the headstock. So there's all these little details that bring it, bring it, make everything pop, and it looks really, really nice. Instead of traditional fret dots, um, we have pieces of wood that kind of start from the side and bleeds onto the fretboard, as you can see here. So you have a fretboard visual and also side of you as well which i really really appreciate very much because when i'm playing i just want to look down and not over and be able to tell where my hands are on the fingerboard so incredible ukulele these are lattice brace they come stocked with the ko'olau smooth wound fourth and they sound incredible so enough of me talking let's let the, the ukulele do all the rest of the talking <laughs>
Yeah. But just keep going on this. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the... Wait. Is this just the baritone version of it? Yeah, so, um, you know, the baritone is kind of the final version. Um, these, uh, like the next shipment, will have the Goto UP. Actually, we have some of these with the Goto UPT, but um, but yeah, with also with the inlay. But you can get like the one that uh, Kalei just played. It'll be like a little bit less expensive than the the next ones that come. So sorry, can uh, get a little bit of a better deal for. And you know, I mean, some people like it maybe less adorned. Oh yeah, you that's too. It's like simple. you're still gonna get the same sound. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. feel. And there's something elegant about that spruce ebony. Just it's uh, nothing flashy, but just all the goods. Speaks. It's everything you need. Elegance. <clears throat> but yeah, yours is just uh, the baritone version. Tell us more. So <clears throat> spruce top, the castor ebony back and sides. Binding is also ebony. It's really kind of flows really well with each other. Um, you got this nice, very nice arm bevel, and it's um, you know, usually it's a you know most most people use like a subtle kind of bevel, but with the Oli's it's like bam, you got an arm bevel. Like there's no question about it. You can totally see it, and. Uh, well done side port um this is a little bigger than uh what some people are used to um but gives the player a really good idea of what the ukulele sounds like because most of the time the ukulele is projecting sound and it's just shooting out in front of you this one's like this really wide spread of delicious tones yeah, as you can hear, you got ebony on the uh, binding for the, the internal binding, I guess, for the uh, rosette, black and white purfling lines, gloss body, satin neck, um, radius fretboard, got the offset fret dots, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, uh, inch and a half nut, very comfortable. You're not going to be, you know, your fingers are going to fit in very well. Heliconia, this is the species of flower that's on the uh, faceplate and also known as the lobster claw. Um, Oli logo here, very nice swoosh design, new, very sleek. And these come with the Goto UPT tuners from Japan installed at the factory and with the Ko'olau. You know what, there's something uh, going on with uh, one of the mics over there. Um, why don't you switch? Yeah, or just oh. sit there for the sounds of it.
Yeah, but this one you hear like yeah, everything. starts it's the activator for the rest of the strings Close your eyes, it's a it's a guitar. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
this fat warmth with the uh, eucologics, but I, I think it's like Corey was saying, like the Ajo set is more lively because I, I think these uh, the tops are lively in general. Mm -hmm. So if you put something that hard tension, it's almost like too much. Kind of. I mean, it would it would all depend on like how you play. Yeah, that's true. You know, like for me, I could get around it. But I've been using those strings for a while, so the you Euclogic know, hard the tension. U I almost think like on that instrument, and I I did put on the cedar the soft tensions. Mm -hmm. I think the soft tension, if you want a like a, a little bit of a lighter set from the Aho that still has a warmth, mm -hmm. I think that would be that would be a good. Yeah, one thing I like about the hard tension is that it allows room for you to dig in, while having the action low. Yeah, oh yeah and, and without it buzzing and stuff right. so like i really appreciate that that uh part of it yeah and they're like cables i mean they just sound like so fat yeah and it doesn't matter like if you're gonna play hard or soft like it, it's like a pretty consistent tone you know or yeah uh, it's just the same thing but louder or softer and i think that's like one of the unique things about the ecologic strings that I follow. Oh, they, I love them, yeah. It's just, you have to, it, you have to match the strings to the instrument to your playing, you know, so. Um, I was actually thinking about using Euclogics on, on Oli, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I really like the Ajo set. It, I think, I'm going to keep that as the standard. Yeah. I think for, like, just for the general player, right the tension from the aho set would be more comfortable for them oh yeah you know. ian just got here Ooh, yes so we're gonna it's break to and good. reset up and um yeah um. That one, gosh, this one. So this one is uh, on the, on the music. So right here on the music, um, she wrote uh, lovingly dedicated to her niece Victoria Kaiulani. And at the bottom, in her handwriting, composed during my imprisonment by the missionary party who overthrew my government. And uh, Iolani Palace. March 22nd, 1895. Oh. 
Amazing. Pretty cool stuff. So what's cool is like actually was just now I was reading and playing from this music, right? And that's what we were. In a way, we were totally connecting, right? With her own like intent of the music and it, it came out on the other side and we were playing it and there's just something really something really satisfying about playing from I like even any manuscript you know I've always kind of been like that and I just I'm finding you know with this project that um you know it really is bringing it to life in in, in a special way um, oh, but also like that's written during imprisonment I mean she was yeah, not so, just not just transcribed, like because like there are stories that like Aloha Oi, for instance, was transcribed during her imprisonment. Like she wrote it earlier, and then when she had time to put it down because she was just there, she was doing a lot of writing, which would make sense, right? And like old songs, like oh yeah, I never wrote that one down, and so, but this one, she wrote it. Is that right? the, composed? Yeah, yeah composed it, during my imprisonment. It, it has like that kind of emotion to it. There's yeah, it's it, it, just all that's so simple, right? In a way, but um, it's that familiarity that brings us in, and then it's that dotted quarter that um, right? Otherwise, it would just be. What a what that like that the four to the three, right? By elongating the G, she's putting more uh, anticipation into that, which is a big feeling in music. You know, the the four to the three or the two to the one. The, those those, um, yeah. It's just really amazing what what um, you know. I'm. I'm Everybody knows that she's a great composer, and we've all, you know, you know, in Hawaii, we all celebrate that in many ways. Um, but you know, it's so great just seeing it and looking at it really closely, and and just, um, you know, literally playing, you know, over a hundred of her songs, you know, just going through the melodies. It's been um, really insightful into her voice as a composer. You know, um, the way she worked with harmony, the way she, um, you know. Just what what her musical language was, you know. Um, I, I went through all the you know 150 songs and categorized them by key. You know, there's a lot in C, F, and G, which makes sense for voice. Um, then there's a lot there's there's uh, quite a few that are in D and and B flat, right? Uh, and I think there's one in E flat that I found too, um, just in, from her handwriting too. You know, which is just yeah, interest very interesting. You know. Um, a lot of single line stuff, so a, a lot of SATB four voice things. Um, two, two, you know, it'll be just a treble clef, but maybe you have two lines. Um, yeah, the Bishop Museum has a, a piece of hers that I'm convinced is guitar music as well. You know, it's got treble clef and another tre two treble clefs, and then the one, the voicings that are in there. Like, like you're like, why would you write that for any other instrument? That's totally a guitar voicing. Um, yeah. So, you've been going deep. Yeah, really deep, really deep. And and it's and congratulations it's, on your new baby girl. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's been oh, what a blessing. Her name is Ivy, and uh, it's just we're we're thinking her eyes might be green. We'll see. It doesn't matter. Might be might be brown. <laughs> a lot of brown in the valley, but they're kind of getting light. So we'll see. We'll see. It's exciting, though. Just uh, yeah. She's making new noises every day and things and uh, holding her head up and all that fun stuff. Just the little things, you know. I mean, everything is little with her, but, um, <laughs> yeah, just... Little toes. Oh, God, no. Ooh, she's just so scrumptious. Cute. It's it's great. I miss her already. And she's, she's a great sleeper, you know, knock on wood. So it's been... <laughs> yeah. Solid wood. Right on oh, man. <laughs> yeah, just right. <laughs> you know, just right here. You, if you're going to hit a guitar, this is the spot, you know, really just... It's solid usually over here. This is where it's the most braced. I'm joking. It's not, it's solid. <laughs> Don't do that. You know. I was gonna say, can you yeah. can you demonstrate that? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Actually, this would probably be the good spot. Actually, yeah. 
but so during this, I guess, somewhat downtime, and since uh, you have a, a good baby because you're a lucky dude, you've really dug in and, and are you almost done or? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm deep. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'd say I'm almost halfway you know a, a healthy halfway but that's some of the hardest it's, that's deceiving right because it's like just getting to that point right there's a lot of in the beginning of just like sitting down and like i'm just writing this is you know what i mean like really like the first day i'm sitting down in like august it's like the ukulele is fun <laughs> like i don't know you know what i mean like i felt like a third grader like trying to write i'm like what is what am i doing but after a while, you know, it's like, okay, let's just dig into some meat and potatoes. Let me just arrange, do what I know. Okay, I'm going to arrange some music. I'm going to just, you know, maybe like have some coffee in the morning and think about like a certain technique, you know, like, oh, free stroke. I don't know, what am I to say about that? Oh, that's a good idea. And then I'll just go to my computer and jot down the idea, you know, have a, a big document I was working from. I made some meaningful steps in the beginning, like, um, you know, going through uh, the um, Olelo no Eo, um Hawaiian Proverbs book essentially from end to end and looking for any olelo no eo that was education, practice, discipline related, preparation, all that stuff, you know, anything that I thought would be useful for a musician um, or, or someone learning an instrument, right? Um, and I sort of interweave those into the book, you know, just have those as like, um, you know, subtitles for chapters and things like that, you know. Um, there's a uh, Olelo no Eo about the uh, importance of um, foundations, you know, before you build a hale. And, um, you know, like putting that in for the, the, the first chapter and things like that. And, and anyways, um, and then I was digging for a lot of music and I was, you know, I started with the reason I ended up with a lot of the Queen's music here, which are all available on the, the Hawaii State Archives uh, digital um, site there. And um, they have a huge treasure trove of, you know, um, handwritten Henry Berger scores, um, Lili Okulani, and all kinds of other um, great, great stuff. But, um, you know, I, I first went through all the Kamehameha School songs and arranged those for guitar and ukulele and, you know, found that, that although they're great songs, um, they're pretty difficult as far as a curriculum goes. You know, they start pretty da, 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 da. like okay it's one thing to teach someone how to sing that but if you're going to learn how to read that that's hard to do in a, a beginner book uh and so um let's go let's start with dotted rhythms that's a good way to start the book welcome to reading music you'll quit immediately <laughs> and, and then so um i i found this uh treasure trove of the queen's music uh there's a book called hebuke mele hawaii that uh is um a compilation of her her own compositions um some contemporary composers of, of hers that were popular songs that she liked as well as some uh, ancient or traditional oli and things like that that she wrote down uh, which was really interesting to see because some of those um you know um, they have odd meters you know but they, it doesn't say it but it's clearly a meter of five and then a meter of four and then a meter of five and then a meter of four like very intentionally like she knew the difference between a whole note and a half note she didn't just make a mistake 140 songs in and decide to you know what i mean like uh, and so um that was cool i had never seen that before you know in in music um but that's why this is sort of becoming uh, a bit bigger of a project because you know in one volume of a book right if you're to pick up a volume of a book and there's 150 songs like you're never gonna make it to all of 150 songs, or that'd be a little daunting, right? Maybe to, to buy it or, to, or to, to start digging in. But if it's 40 songs, if it's 50 songs, right? That makes a little more sense for a graded um, system where we can start with, you know, C major, G major, right? Um, F, you know, whole note, half note, quarter note, some eighth notes, dotted quarter notes maybe, right? And then moving into book two and book three, then we get the 16th notes and other things like that. And so essentially, um, I went from, I was going to write one book, I think the last time I came on here, and now I'm going to write like eight books or something. <laughs> There's going to be, um, yeah, the Lili U stuff is all going to be divided into three volumes um, and guitar and ukulele, right? Um, 150 songs. So 50 about each volume or so, you know. 
it'll have almost all of her music. Maybe not every single one of her songs, but it's going to be pretty darn close to you know a full collection of all of her available sheet music, um, handwritten, and um, you know including facsimiles of all of that. Um, and then the those will be six of the books, and then the other two are going to be uh, songs for Kamehameha Schools, uh, which is you know all of the Imo Kamehameha, Kamehameha Waltz, and March, and the ones that they sing at song contest and things um, that are a big part of the tradition. But um, those are just going to be in tablature, ready available in like string um, for guitar quartet or ukulele quartet. Yeah, so really good for classroom use. Um, those are going to include tablature, and you know that because because of that. Yeah. Nice. That way, it's just a little more widespread. Whereas the Lili'u curriculum, you know, three volume is um, a little more. In, uh, I'm I'm focusing it on um, really this idea of um, learning to read notation. Yeah, um, and because especially you know as as far as my my class goes in in a school setting, um, you know. I, I could, you know, I, I do teach tablature as well, but it's not some, one of the focuses, and that's always one of the things that um, I find to be a little more challenging to do without a good teacher, you know. Um, just like sitting down and teaching yourself to read music is pretty tough, you know. Um, but, you know, if you take a course, right, like a music theory course or something like that, where you really go through exercises and you have something like that, that makes it much more meaningful. And so... Anyways, that's one of the reasons I teach teach note reading is I know that if, if I don't teach the kids to read uh, notes, they're probably not going to get it many other places, right? Um, so, um, yeah. Um, we'll see. It's going to be eight books now. So, <laughs> anyways, I've been getting up at like 4.35, you know, something like that. And part, of, part of the Queen's uh, purpose was for the Hawaiians to read music? Well, no, no. Um, it, she wanted, um, you know, the, the these books, you know, and, and the music is really to get it out there, right? Um, that's one of the, the things. Um, and to, um, you know, just to, to record the songs. I think she said, uh, there's there was a quote, um, she said something to the effect of, you know, um, that she was one of the only one of her generation, her siblings and things, um, that actually put pen to paper when it came to uh, writing music. You know, that a lot of them were very creative, that the Hawaiian people were very poetic and great songwriters and things like that, but not many of them uh, were able to write it down, you know. Uh, and so it's interesting because she didn't say read, but it almost has a, a similar... Anyway, so it's a curious... Um, comment and it reminds me of another one um schubert you know and i said this on a different on the same you know on the previous podcast was you know franz schubert um, ave maria said that guitar is played by many but understood by few right um and you know just it just you know the art of of playing music and reading and all that it's it's it is difficult um but I think something to remember, you know, and, and, and just part of the conversation, I'm not saying is a yes or no thing. And, you know, um, do I think the queen thought reading music was useful? Yes. Do I think she thought it was necessary for everybody and that she expected everybody to read? No. Did she expect that maybe one or two people within a household would know how to read so that they could grab the instrument and sing the melody? Yeah. I think it was more common than it is now. You know, so like why, because like why would she just put in like notation? Well, that was the only way to communicate it, right? Like what else is she going to do? She put, yeah, like, put no an MP, what is she going to put an MP3 in there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, so that was the vehicle, right? And like, and a lot of times they would publish songs like in the newspaper that just had the lyrics, you know, and people knew how the melodies went, you know. Um, and so you're, you're going to provide this book with tapulature also. For um, people like me that don't want to <laughs> even start to all read. The, all of the Queen songs, yeah. Well, that can that can be a different. So, see that may be book nine, is <laughs> is um, essentially. So the way I'm just way I've designed the the books because like for instance like the the first song chant um, that she wrote for Pawahi it, it uses five notes. It's basically whole note, half note, and quarter note, which are the first rhythms you learn. You know, and it's a very good piece of music to learn to read, right? Um, and so as far as you know, designing a curriculum, um, you know. Um, for reading music, that's what I've been doing with the Queen songs. Now, 
That being said, I already have all of the music in notation and I could crank out a tablature version of all 150 of her songs like by next week. Do it. I'm not going to I mean a lot of people are like me like when I think about learning to read, I'm just like, "Oh my god, just never mind." No, I know. I know. It's very daunting. I mean, but for that, kids, that so I, so I here's the it, thing. But... I don't want to just slap it together too, right? Because it it's got to include lyrics too. Right, like you can't just like like for to, to really get the song out there, right? Like the way she would want people to play it, include the tablature, but also have the lyrics, right? And and she oftentimes had the Hawaiian and the translation, right? Which was fun to see her own translation, you know, on things. And then you're gonna have recordings of yourself that people can yeah listen and follow along with. Yep, yep. So uh, videos of me playing with uh, notation scrolling at the bottom. Oh, that's um, sick. Yeah, and that's that, and then that can really help, right? Because that way, you know, I understand reading it is a lot, but that way, at least if they're watching the video, seeing where I'm playing something, they can make that relationship to what's happening in the notation underneath. That's kind of how books should come at this point in time, right? Yeah, well, it's really an ebook. You know, it's sort yeah. of a hybrid. It's not so. It's interesting because, like, really at first, it was the way I was writing. It was really just like a book, book traditional book sort of uh, mentality um and then only recently i've really been um heavily sort of um because i always th thought about adding the video element don't get me wrong right i always knew that this book was going to have videos that went along with it but to take it to this sort of next um level of interactive um media right where you know uh, it's like hey this is a whole note right uh this is a half note let's clap a whole note and then you press play a little play button right next to it on the screen and then it'll be like one two ready go one two three four one two three four and you're clapping whole notes together go on learn half notes click play right and a little more just easy like that right um even with the music right so that when we see it it's a little always have a little thing scrolling to help the eye follow right because that's that's also the other thing with reading music is you need to just like when we read, right, where our eyes are constantly scanning, right? Um, we need to do the same with with notation. So, um, I was telling the guys uh, before we started, man, I feel like I got work for years. I, you're in the same boat. It's, yeah, it's just like you have your your mindset on what you want to accomplish, and it's just gonna take time. Yeah, yeah. There's no no way around it, and that's why you know um, I do think a tablature version is warranted, and I totally actually um you know before we even were talking about this was really planning on a, a tablature version you know um it's just a matter of bandwidth um and what i can because because here's the thing once i i finish this and i really dig in on each song because with each song for instance like um you know we start with a chant and then i ha i talk about you know with each song, we're going to have her handwriting, have the modern notation version to learn it, all those little exercises to learn the song, but then also have the mo'olelo, you know, or just have the story about the song, any history or whatever I can find out about it, you know, um, then that'll sort of go there, right? Uh, and just have, and, and after I've done all this project, going back and then putting a, a, a tablature version together, you know, then I'm going to have all that material um to really do a great su version support you know? from like oha or one of the, like the foundations that uh well my school is really supporting oh, me Camp right school. Yeah. is really supporting me yeah so that's cool that's the whole sabbatical thing is you know basically you know they're they're yeah supporting me to to like, write a book you can take off work but you still have to work yeah well i mean i'm just that's what i'm being paid to do it's yeah. just to yeah it's to write and so are you an author yet is this going to be your first book? Well, it will be my first book. That's 100% true. Um, the publisher said that he was um, happy with my writing voice, that he was impressed. You know, that, yeah. I don't know. Did he really expect bad, bad things? I'm worried. No. No. <laughs> I was like, it's like, wow, impressed. That was better than I thought. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, no, he didn't say that. But he said, he said but it was, yeah, I, I, I'm. Hopeful that, uh, yeah. So far, I've ran past a, f a few, a few individuals, and you know, gotten some good feedback, and you know. Oh, I can already tell you're a good writer because you, you, 
have a lot to share. Well, you speak it's... clearly. I've been finding that the writing process is making me really um, very much like that, though, in my day-to-day. -day. Like, I'll say something and be like, no, 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 but what I meant was actually was a, I could have said that better. What I meant was... <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's just anyways. My wife's just rolling her eyes. I I like stuff when it's in a conversational manner, though. Oh yeah, yeah. When it it's like if you can read it out and it sounds normal, that's it. And actually, so I found. Speaking of that, I found that there is a, in the Microsoft Word, um, you know, um, phone version. If I'm looking at it on my phone, looking at the document, when I'm away from my computer, trying to still work on it. Um, I can go look at it there, and I found a read aloud button, and you can read it in a man's voice or a woman's voice. And so I was like, well, let's just listen to a woman read it, because I listen to myself read it all the time. And it was cool because it totally changed. Like, I heard things, and I'm like, oh, why did I say it like that? Why, why don't I? Mm. I'm repeating myself. What am I? That That's redundant. I don't need that extra preposition or whatever you know what i mean i just kept oh it was great it was a real ear opening yeah sometimes even like um, um like you know saying we're instead of we are or certain things like that mm. i like better because mm -hmm. it's like it just sounds more normal or it sounds less mm -hmm. formal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know i guess different styles right wow totally um but yeah so so it's it's been a um you know a process but it's it's been really fun because i'm learning a lot even even just from um like the earnest kai method for instance um that was a really fun uh dig um that that <clears throat> i was able to look at thanks to um kylan reese um i don't know if you're, you know kylan and he's of course he's, he's the best and um so he he turned me on to those resources and um just been really learning a lot from the the 1906 you know was all tablature and charts and things you know uh, but then the 1916 version, um, Ernest Kai uh, actually has a, a section specifically dedicated to learning to read notes. Um, and he says that, you know, um, some, it was like, uh, as the art of the ukulele is advancing or something like that, and, and you know, we're moving up higher and higher on the neck, uh, to take full advantage of the fretboard, it just makes sense to um, learn notation or something like that. I forget what he... Um, anyways, um, and so then he has all these exercises in there that are just notation and reading, you know, a couple of songs. It's like really not much. You know, there's like three or four exercises. There's one that's a, a scale kind of a thing that jumps around a little bit. There's one that's an arpeggio, um, but it's a great arpeggio. You know, it goes three, two, four, one. Right, because he used reentrant tuning, and if you do that, that's an ascending arpeggio on the ukulele, right? Um, C E G A, right? And and like, I right? think he had he had that's schools, right? Nice, but... in, in, in town, <laughs> yeah, that, Kai. Like that. Sorry, he was like uh, he had schools, right? On on this island? Yeah, yeah. No, he was very he was a businessman for sure, uh, and. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not really familiar with. Yeah, they. There was even instruments made, um, you know, Ernest yep. Kai instrument. Yep. But he was more known as a instructor, and I think he had schools and stuff. Yeah, if yeah. I remember correctly. No, but he seemed like he was a real like kind of remind me oh, of my yeah. cousin uh, Patrick Landeza. He's got his foot in everything. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The yeah. guy's like, he's putting on concerts. He's playing concerts. He's, yeah. he's. You walk out from the concert and he's standing there serving food to everybody at <laughs> the yeah, concert, yeah, yeah, selling yeah. t-shirts, fresh he's poke, got poke. <laughs> he's got jam. He's got jewelry. He's got t-shirt. Yeah, it's like what? I know. I envy those kind of people. Like I hate marketing and all that kind of stuff. But oh, some people are so good at it. So good at it. That's yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so I imagine the same thing with and clearly Ernest Kaya was really good at it too. Right, it just seems sort of natural, and it's evident from the paper trail that he left behind. Um, yeah. So, um, shall we play some music or something? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very nice. That's for my wife. Good to know. Aww. Yeah. Three notes. Um, bass line. Was that the one I was supposed to go? Yeah. Oh, dang it. Sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, try, try, what would that sound like? So, one, two, three, four, boom. So imagine I didn't know it was going to be that and one. And with that part added in, that's what that would have been. Um, but yeah, we were married on um, 3.30. And for a while, we were a family of three, if that makes sense. But now we're four. So, and we're not having three. No, that's not. No, we're not having no, three kids. Not family of five? No, not don't, yet. Don't. You never know. Right, I'm, I'm leaving. All right. <laughs> um, Why not? No, no, no. There were have to write like five more books you know they're expensive <laughs> <laughs> you only have so many sabbaticals you can <laughs> play. Got some man i am on my yeah the bigger your family the, the, the more you gotta work yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> another job <laughs> yeah no, anyways um oh, you yeah. got the no we're just very thankful right now yeah, yeah it's good family. um so that's fun it's yeah, usually man. up to the wife <laughs> about having yeah. more and all that you know it's like yeah we're they just, usually we're tell the you ride. when they're done <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny
<laughs> older child. What tooting is that? I don't know. <laughs> dad fad. D A D. It's the dad fad, man. Everybody's oh, okay. doing it. <laughs> F sharp A D. Uh, D A D. F sharp A D. Yeah. You know, Ernie didn't write a ton of songs, but the ones he did are golden. Oh. I mean, you know, I, I of course, I love Ernie, but I, I mean, I really learned that song from Blaine, who's where I first actually. I mean, I did. I, I always. It's funny. It's like, like I didn't really Ernie, know about that song. Two point oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um. But yeah, um, you went and recorded an album over there with him too. Sorry, didn't oh, you Blaine? go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went over to um to Big Island, and um, that's where I put a lot of the uh, Disney stuff in the can. Yeah, that I've yet to release. I'm just sitting on it yeah, for some what reason. The... I've, got, like, I've got like I've got like I've got like a dozen Disney songs that are like mastered and ready. Yeah, to... you had them ready last wow. time. You were yeah. oh, like, <laughs> you're gonna start pissing people off. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, up. well, right now, my it's hard because like my website's down right now, and so like I have too many things that I want to do first before I, re- like I don't want to release it, and like I'm not ready to sell it. Like if people are gonna find it and then try to find me, like or anything like that, like I don't know. Well, what do you mean? Just put it up for sale. <laughs> I know, but that's what I mean. maybe somebody out there can answer the question, and this would be great for the the, the audience there. Does anybody know? Could I get a piece of music available? Looking at your new sheet music you're learning, right? And then embedded right there on the sheet music, have a built-in metronome and a tuner. And a little button that says record, like a little box that has those three options, right? And you could press record and listen to yourself practicing. Give yourself some instant feedback. You could click the metronome and practice it slow or medium or fast. Or you could click the other button and tune your thing. But the key is not leaving the page. I don't want to have to the person to break their concentration and go to their phone and do the tuner or go to other device or go to another opening window. Oh, you have that. to write a note, your app. You have to write a whole app for that. I don't know. Well, I, but but I'm just asking the question and like how do I'm sure there's somebody who could do that. But it, like that just makes so much sense. Like that would be so like any app designers out there? Yeah, <laughs> app designer looking for some work. Just like put that together for me, please, and I'll give you like ukulele lessons for life. <laughs> a lot of guitar lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're like 140 and. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm Not many app designers are. <laughs> I, just... <sighs> I think I'm fine. No, I don't. Um, so, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I so I went from no gigging to three gigs I was telling you within like 24 hours I did a Friday night and then a Saturday morning Saturday night after not playing from like third week in November to gosh this was like first week of February or like yeah like February 12th you know what I mean and I so I went basically like anyways two and a half months and I was very tired my hands were very Hating me. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You spent that time a lot of time, uh, like writing and, and researching. And oh, yeah. So you weren't even like up on the practicing and all that. No, it's, it's crazy too. It's like them playing a three hour gig and going like, you know, over there going like, I haven't played this for like two months. I hope I never heard this session. You know what I mean? And you're just like having this inner dialogue, like as the song is going like, and it goes over here. Oh my goodness, what's happening next? You know what I mean? Like just, just the. It's a very nerve wracking moment, like it, like diving in. You know what I mean? Like the, the about to start. Like okay, I haven't done this one for a long time. No, sometimes I have trouble with this, but here we go. <sighs> to mistakes and all just whoops hey <laughs> that's fine um yeah i think everybody that's listening that has performed at all can relate with that sort of like feeling of like oh my god <laughs> like nerves or yeah you know. well and, it, and it, it it 
what it reminds me is um, the importance of good practice and how that affects your long-term memory, you know? Because, like, I'd get to points in songs and I'm just like, I have no idea. And th my biggest mistakes were when I didn't really know the song, but where I was able to recover and fake it and things like that was where I understood the structure, you know? Where maybe I studied the song a little more. Maybe I knew the chords behind the arrangement and things like that, right? Like it's not just knowing that all, you pick all this in order, but actually what's underlying it is you're outlining maybe an A minor chord or it goes to an E7 or things like that, right? Um, There's a, um, in the Lou 3 world, a, uh, I don't know how, it was, it's something like you, the sign of a great luthier is how well he covers his mistakes. Right, yeah. That's same thing. Interesting, wow. Yeah, because I mean, that's, um, you know, I always, you know, there's a very, I won't, I won't say it, but there's a very famous recording that has a big, mis that not a big mistake, but there's a mistake in it. There's definitely a whoopsie. Didn't change chords. We're supposed to change chords. And nobody notices it. And I'm the only one who notices it. And it drives me nuts. What's that? But, no, I'm not going to say. What? But it drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> not going to throw them under no, the No, 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 yeah. Because, I mean, it's a great recording. No, I'll say it because it's, it's, a, it's a great. And I think I actually mentioned it on the last podcast. But it's the, uh, there's a mistake in the Israel uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow where he doesn't change. It's near the end, like when he starts doing the vamping almost kind of a thing. And it's like it's like right before that, and he, and it's typical, right? Typical musician thing. You're going into the last chorus, and yeah, freaking oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like no, it's just mm, what is that? What is that? I mean, but it's just anyways. And it was there, but he's so smooth that it was just like and moving on. You didn't know I didn't change one earlier. You know what I mean? It was. I mean, it's so Manini, but at the same time, like. It, it's so his you listen to his voice over it and it's just butter right it's there is no you know that in the back of his mind there was a, a little part of it that went whoops but it went whoops out doesn't matter you know it's like uh falling gracefully is another way of saying that yeah and it's like it would have been stupid of him to stop because it was a golden oh, recording yeah it was it's it's one and it's such a <laughs> I mean, it's what makes that story, too, right? Is that it's the one time he just sat down, three in the morning, right? Called Milan or whatever, and he actually answered. What? Okay, what I know, recording right? engineer <laughs> do you know that you could call at three in the morning is going to be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, bro, I'll go meet you there. Shoots, good idea. Let me set everything up. Great yeah, idea. Right I want to be there. I know. That's what I want to be doing right now. You're like, what? And he did it. Is and somebody grabbed... dying? Why are you calling me? <laughs> and he grabbed... And he did it. Al Milan did it. And he grabbed... Oh, this is one. He, he... And he grabbed that recording, you know? And if he hadn't, we wouldn't have that magic. But it just shows to show you that... It goes to show you that, like, you know, magic isn't perfect, right? Like, those recordings and, and things, they're not. Perfect. Yeah. And with AI coming up, you know, it's like, there's... There's something special about being human. Mm -hmm. Yep. The realness. Oh, yeah. Because AI is going to do everything better technically than us yep. one day. It's just, well, the is human... it going to have the same soul? You know? Well, the human struggle is what we enjoy about music. Yeah. And I, I know I'm, I mentioned this at one point, you know, maybe in a lesson or something for, for your site. But um, the idea that... Um, you know, if we play um, E and G, like say two notes, or let's say the octave, um, right? Um, and let's say not the octave, let's do the F. So F to E on one string like that, right? Well, I could go like this. I could go. I could do that. But going like this, um, sorry, versus, like, that struggle makes it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, that, it, it, yeah, the yeah, struggle yeah. is what we like. That's what we want. We want to see music go, oh, look, they're having a hard time. Oh, God. Well, they made it. Yeah. Like, and yes. you, you can and like, hear that, too, with it. It sounds more intense. Right, so <laughs> like 
How exciting. Yeah. It's the jump. It's the physical movement. It's the human struggle that we obsess over, like, Netflix on and everything. You know what I mean? Like, all these shows and think it's that. We love that struggle. Movies and whatever. Though. Yeah, that's true. Like, we, we like if it. a robot can play, like, you know, 64th note scales or, you know, just blaze, it doesn't matter to us because it's like, well, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> of course like, what can. if they, I mean, like, what if, like, what if, like, the Avengers got, like, all the, the Infinity Stones in the first minute and then went, like, oh, cool. Okay, we're done. Yeah. Bye, Thanos. <laughs> oh. There'd be no movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, you need the struggle. You yeah, need yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what we want. We crave that, actually. It's weird. It's, like, it's, a, it's not weird, but it's, like, it's the human experience. Yeah. Right? So. um, Well, thanks again for having me, man. It's really fun. Nah, you know, you're so fun. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, not playing a whole bunch these days, but I'm really, um, I'm writing a lot and um, thinking about music a lot, you know, thinking about how, I love that song for Janelle. Yeah, you know, simple but stuff like so that. Sweet. You know, just just like that's what I want to do more of now. It's like I'm I'm finding more of, and I and I've always I've been sort of down that road late. You know, in the past with guitar, it's just composing or arranging things. Right, I really enjoy that. But I'm finding that this side of um, documenting, um, you know, teaching, you know, and writing a book like that is is a side of what I've been working on a lot in the classroom developing. Right, but haven't had a place to share that, so that's been nice. You know, do you, do you miss working with the kids? Oh yeah, totally. God, they're good. They're so fun. They're they're insanely irritating sometimes, <laughs> but it's so worth it. Talk about my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're just like you know, high school kids, man. Like nine through twelve. Like it doesn't matter. Even. And every kid, right? They have their good days and their bad days. Like they're and they're high school kids. Gosh, they have bad days, and you know what I mean. Like I gotta be, and I try to go around the room, you know, and say everybody's name, you know, um, at least once a class or every other class, you know, make sure that I'm calling on them to answer, feel involved, and things. And when you when you are that social, you know, um, I do miss that, you know, um, and and really you know, seeing the kids grow and, and, um, you know, like I'm missing a whole, like some kids right now, you know, who are, um, sophomores, you know, I'm going to come back and they're seniors, you know, next year. And, um, we'll see, you know, that's, um, <clears throat> yeah, they're just, they're just, um, they're really good, you know, and it's really inspiring. Um, it, it makes me realize, cause I was a, a Kamehameha student as well. That's where I teach now. And, they, um, I, I teach in the same room where I took guitar class, you know, it's just really trippy. And, um, it's interesting because like I, I, it, you know, it's one of those places that's really meaningful. It, it, it grounds me, gives me a lot of reverence for what I do, you know, because I, I had such a personal experience taking class in that room and the teacher, uh, his name was Eric Shimomoto, um, rest in peace. He, uh, was a great great teacher meaning like he not only was good to, to the students and things he was a nice teacher everybody liked him because class was you know a cruise class or whatever right but but he really took the time with me like after class and like poor thing and now i think back as a <laughs> i was at his door like every lunch every free period that i had i was just like he would close his office door and like sit there and it's like a small room like i could see him sitting there and he's just sitting there like eating his lunch or like doing his work and I would just sit like in a chair, just like staring at his door, like waiting for him to be done so that he could show me how to play like uh, the Tears in Heaven, you know, like he'd showed me the beginning and I, I didn't know the next part yet. But this was 1998 and there was no YouTube. There was no tabs available. This was only thing I had was a cassette tape, you know, and anyways, it was, you know, one of those things that, um. Yes, I, I I really love teaching up there. You know, um, they're good kids, and it's inspiring. You know, just te knowing that this book is going to be what I bring back to the classroom for them. Yeah, and, and you know, you can provide what, you know, what you received that inspired you, and yeah, and not just at school there. Like all my teachers, like like learning from Byron, from Benny, right? Like I've got a bit in there about the the Benny and Byron strum. You know, like using flesh. You know, so that you, it's not everything. 
Dave Amp. And singing. Bam. Can you use nails for that? Flesh. No nail. It requires a bit of an open hand kind of a thing, right? For you guys in youth groups, take a note there. Yeah. It's, a, it's an important one. Oh, yeah. This is the Benny and Byron. Give the vocals away. their space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because as a solo ukulelist, you know, a lot of times um, the problems that beginners have when they're collaborating with artists is the instinct to go for the same spot. Meaning, um, you know, if you're a solo artist, you're trying to hear that melody, hear where it can fill in, right? But if you're backing up a singer, the singer has the main spot. You need to now play in the periphery, right? And that's a totally different timing. Like, I want to play here. Wait for the singer to be done. Now there. You know what I mean? Actually, so there's a lot of what I found, at least, what, like, like I started playing with this guy, Jason Allen. Um, and he was great. Um, I, and he and I played at uh, Tiki's in Waikiki for, like every Monday for like two years, uh, Monday night. And uh, that was a great gig. But I really learned a lot on the gig with him. And uh, he's just a strong singer, you know, like he does a killer journey. Like that, that kind wow. of, you know, he's that kind of a singer. Just like, yeah, but like acoustic guitar, like what a lead guy, right? <laughs> and there was no playing over that. You know what I mean? Like, if I went to, like... <laughs> like... <laughs> Probably drown you out anyway. Oh, yeah. No, he's like, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, you know, and it was so... Anyways, and then later I, I got to back up uh, and play a lot with Blaine. You know, same kind of thing. But I had kind of learned a lot, really, from playing with, with Jason um, on the spot, you know. At this... You know, on, at the gig, you know. Um, that's where I learned a lot of my backing up, sort of. Um, yeah. filling in chops and things yeah that and the and uh the bentos uh with mark Lindbergh and um mark tanoi ethan capone those guys um i used to play <clears throat> back before i went to yale um i was in that group and so learned a lot about space and taste yeah you can a lot of times kind of answer their melody a little bit in between yeah exactly you that know. sort of stuff well being yeah it's like it's um you know um What's what's a great example? Um, what's a melody? Like, even even something like even something like Songs yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Do you play in that tuning often? the fad yeah man. the dads no i'm i i it's, i reached a point to where i'm kind of like telling myself like do i just tell myself no more dad fad <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting like a little too comfortable in dad fad like i feel like but <laughs> but stat no but it's not. you should try it Corey. i all the to, dads are doing it it's to get familiar with regular tuning things. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if um, I that's funny. Explore the other ones. You know, I just got in um, this new line that I'm doing, but yeah. can I um, get you to sample? I'd one love of these? to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, awesome. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful, man. Knock yourself out, man. That thing is amazing.
I'm so clear on this. Maui chimes. Oh, nice. Yeah. With all the chimes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My dad taught me that one when nice. I was like five. He taught me the. Uh, uh, Later, I realized that the Benny and Byron thing, that's totally how my dad drums. Like, Oh, cool. He doesn't use nails because he doesn't play really, right? So he doesn't grow any. Um, but just the way he strums, it's a little bit of the backward thing here. Mm. But it's a very brushed, like, thing. And I'm like, that's yeah. just, like, that's, I think that's just the old school guy. It's, like, it's a really clean and smooth sound mm -hmm, you know, when you get mm -hmm. stuff like... it's just it's just really nice and gentle and even and mm -hmm. pleasant to the ears yeah a lot of people forget that you can do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people don't like being yelled at <laughs> listen to me <laughs> listen to how beautiful this is <laughs> listen to how pretty <laughs> listen to how pretty my ukulele playing is like oh this is great though That's signed by David Kahonosi or whatever. That's what he went by. Different than Kalakawa. Is it that's the original? Yeah, that was uh so it was originally the title Hymn of Kamehameha the First. And when you look down at the bottom, it's signed in Lahaina in 1875 by Kalakawa himself. How's that writing? And but it was written by Henry Berger, the music, right? And that copy is autographed by Kalakaua himself in 1875. Hawaii Ponoi didn't become the Hawaiian National Anthem till the following year. Wow. So Berger, Henry Berger arrived in Hawaii in 1872 and wrote the music. Kalakaua added the, mu the lyrics to that in 74. And then they created that image and signed it in 75. And then in 76 is when it became the Hawaiian National Anthem. Wow. That is about the oldest version of Hawaii Ponoi in existence. Wow. And it's in a collection. This guy has it in Vienna. And I'm trying to get it. In I'm trying Vienna? To, yeah. I was seeing if Kamehameha wants to buy it. Maybe the State Archives or Bishop Museum will want to buy it. Sick. But I think it should be here and not there. Wow. Yeah. Like, why don't we <laughs> have... Pretty why don't Why don't we have why, the original copy of Hawaii there? Ponoi? Like... That's our, isn't that our national anthem? That's it doesn't even seem like something they'd have to buy. It's like, give it back. <laughs> yeah, well, the guy, the, who, whoever has it, bought it at an auction in the U.S., right? You know what I mean? And like, and I don't know, because I, I tried to get the provenance on it. Like, how did it get there? Like, what's the story? Like, did Berger, because it's in Vienna, and Berger was from Vienna, so I, for a second I thought, like, oh, Maybe he took it to the King of Prussia as a present from Kalakaua. Like, look, you know what I mean? Like, that would have been cool because that he was, when Berger first came, he was only here on, uh, he was here Deezer as a, or something. yeah, he was here on loan basically from the King of Prussia and uh, Wilhelm or something like that. And um, he was only supposed to be here like four years. And so. I don't know, just the timing of that being when it was signed and stuff. I'm wondering, like, like is that would that have been something that, like, Kawakawa would have, like, made manuscripts of or gotten someone to make manuscripts of and then he signed them as, like, presents? Or, like, to share the national anthem with other people? Like, I don't know what the, what the story is on this. Like, why, why is there... what? I mean, we know... What I do know is it's signed by him and that it's the oldest version of Hawaii Ponoi that I've ever seen. You know, that's period. So maybe you can. Uh, I'll send you the picture, and maybe at this point you could. Yeah. I'll put put the image up. 
See? Right here. This image. There's his, there's his <laughs> signature right here. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Your finger is going to be a little off. <laughs> okay. I'll, be a little no, off I'll, I'll move it. All right. Um, speaking of, let's play it, shall we? Okay. And end with some, as in we do Hawaii style, and with Hawaii Ponoi. All right. F. And F. Yes. I'll try not to get an F for the performance. <laughs> 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 oh, the self-doubt just made him leave her. All right, so we start with the... Uh... <laughs> that was good. I missed a lot of the. Hey, I missed the second one of the last one. That's why I did the vamp three times instead. You of only missed ninety nine point. I mean, point zero zero one percent. I missed five mm, <laughs> percent. You know, interesting way to end. I thought the Hawaii Pono E, right? Because like, that's like how you end concerts in Hawaii, and then how to end a podcast. I don't know if you've ended with Hawaii Bono E before. Yeah, that's perfect. But it's either that or Hawaii Aloha. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think that might have been like the first time maybe playing. Nah, maybe not the first time, but. Um... Hey, Corey, grab that um, grab that uh, package right there. No, 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 no. Right there. Oh, this? My yeah, sandwich? I, I, yeah, the sandwich. I just wanted to give a shout out. This, this t shirt here. We just got gifted these. Ladies, <laughs> and, and crazy. I, I, you know they sent us these in like the most clever packaging ever. So you get it like like a. I don't. I almost like. like I you're getting open a, it, a sub and, and chips. It, right? <laughs> and then, you know, you have a receipt. This is the family pack, and it includes your sandwich, which is a T-shirt, and a bag of chips. 
So check out Uke Ladies. I mean, it's just super, awesome. super cool marketing. Although, Thank you guys. I got a little hungry. I was hoping there was a, a sub in there. <laughs> well, you got a napkin. Uh, yeah. The t-shirt deli. It did come with chips, though. Just the chips are, you can't eat the chips. Anyway. You open it, it's just a bunch of film yeah. picks. Like, oh. <laughs> that, but... It's, uh, Thank you. This is one of the coolest. This is freaking awesome. Probably the coolest packaging for a t-shirt I've ever seen. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Ian, the t-shirt daily. Every time you get the inclination to come stop by, please do. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, it feels like I haven't seen you in a year, but it's only been like three months. A few months, yeah. Yeah, a long three months. I'm I'm so happy that everything's going well with the baby. Yeah, because that first period is where it's like really touchy and, oh, and sensitive, and you know, I mean, once you're once you're out of that zone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you calm down a little bit. It's like okay, yeah, she just made uh, twelve weeks, so we're sweet, feeling a little more comfortable. Yeah, let me know however I can help with the book with any of the recordings or anything like that. I know you got some on your own but yeah i'd be happy to help and um you know we have like i'm looking over here like at like 30 different models we need to get sound samples like of. 30 <laughs> more in the room there yeah no there's 20 more <laughs> yeah there's wow. so many different oli models i want to show you guys but we're just going to keep hitting them up each day with Corey and clay on sound samples and um the place to check those out is tus clips here on youtube tus clips so there's a lot that won't make it on the podcast um go subscribe there so you can see these coming up i'm so grateful for all three of you guys and for you guys we have the the best followers in the world i mean i look at the dumpster fire that is the comment section of other things on youtube and i'm like i come back to ours i'm like these are the sweetest people ever it's all nice yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so awesome so um Mini, mini Mahalo. All right, I'm going to start an account just to troll. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This guy. Yeah, that is did, cool. he, did he do his nails on the sidewalk? It's nice to mix it up. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, all it takes is one <laughs> negative comment to make me be like, oh, man, shucks. Aww. I thought it was doing good. <laughs> Deny. Deny all that. Yeah. Yeah, then I'll be sad and be like, wait a minute, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, that's so funny. All right, all right so Mahalo, we man. will. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you guys soon, and hopefully we'll see you too, Ian, soon. All right. So, all right. Aloha.